Hey, Brian Miller here, author, speaker, magician, podcast host, and audio nerd. And welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. And in this video, we're taking a detailed look at the latest offering from Rode, the VideoMic NTG. And this thing is a freaking miracle. But hold on, aren't you the guy that hates Rode that's always going on and on about that other one? What's it, the, uh, the Movo VXR10? Well, no, and yes. No, I don't hate Rode microphones. In fact, I've been using Rode microphones since I was a teenager. The entire first seven or eight years of my career as a magician, in fact, I was using this, the original Rode video mic. This had a, a nine volt battery and, uh, and it had a, a high pass filter and all. This thing was fantastic. I used this on my camcorder to film and record all of my magic shows for the beginning, the first half of my career, which I used to create promo videos. And so in, in some ways, Rode helped me build my magic career. But when it comes to this, the Rode Video Micro, one of the most popular, if not the most popular microphones for YouTube content creators, I just think the Movo VXR10 is a better overall option. Having said that, this Video Mic NTG is truly spectacular. And I uploaded today, uh, the same day that you're getting this video, on my main channel, kind of an overview video. If you're just looking for an overview of the features and whether this might be a good mic for you or not, you might wanna head to the link in the description over to that main channel video because here we're about to do a deep dive into all the different functions, the settings, and the incredible things that this mic can do few notes before we get started. First of all, all the audio in this video will be coming directly out of the video mic NTG. So you can assume there is no processing. It's raw coming directly out of the microphone unless you see something on the screen to tell you otherwise. I'm recording directly into the Tascam DR05 portable audio recorder, which is just a budget level made of plastic. So it's the kind of thing the average content creator might actually have. And lastly, this mic was sent to me for free by Rode in exchange for a review. Now, it was sent to me for a review on my main channel, the one with almost 15,000 subscribers on it. Uh, they don't even know about, I, I'm guessing Rode doesn't even know about this little channel that I just started recently that's in its, you know, in its infancy with a couple hundred people, you, you lovely folks watching this right now. Um, having said that, it's obviously biased, right? And I don't mean I'm trying to be biased. Like nobody tries to be biased when they're giving a review. But when reviewers say that it was sent to me for free, but it's an unbiased review, that's clearly nonsense. When we review something, we review things very differently when we've spent our own money on it. We take a much more critical look at the flaws and faults than we do when it was given to us for free. So. As much as I can, this is going to be an objective review, but let's all understand, when you're given something for free, there is no chance for it to be unbiased. And let's just get something out of the way. Is this a copycat or a clone of one of those deity mics that's been making the rounds recently? I mean, yeah, it, it, it kind of is, but we're gonna give Rode a pass on this one because they've been innovating in the consumer grade and prosumer grade audio space for a long, long time. And what they've done here is take all the different functionality, all the different possible features, none of which were totally revolutionary or you know, none of which were you know invented by Rode for the first time for this mic, but they took all these different technologies, they put them into an amazing, simple, user-friendly, and fairly affordable package. It's a $250 mic. Is that a lot of money? Of course that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to anybody, right? But for 250 bucks, this may be the last microphone you ever need to buy as a content creator. First thing I'd like to do is just list off all of the features that exist in this thing. And I'm not even gonna pretend to have memorized this list of features. I've got them right here on my tablet. So let's take a look. First, it's got a universal connection. What does that mean? It means that you don't need a different connection, a different cable for TRS versus TRRS. 
So those of you who've ever used a microphone before uh, when it comes to external audio know that you have to use the correct cable. TRS cables are for cameras and audio recorders. TRRS cables are for smartphones, tablets, and computers. The problem is when you have a mic, especially a consumer level mic, they typically only come with one cable. And then if you want to use that mic for the opposite type of device, you need to either buy a different cable or get an adapter cable. It's a pain. This mic, it's like magic. No matter what you plug it into, it figures out what type of device it is and just makes the right connection. You only need one cable. It's fantastic. It has adjustable manual gain with recall. So the recall is manual, but here's what I mean. Right here on the back, is a turn dial with gain from 0 to 15. There's no clicks, it's totally smooth, and it has the numbers right on there. So you'll always know what number gain you had your mic set to. Therefore, if you come back to a project, all you have to do is have written down or taken a photo of the gain setting, and you'll never have to worry about inconsistent levels in post if you have to take new shots and punch in and edit stuff together later. It's got the automatic power on, power off feature that we've been seeing in the last two years for these types of microphones. Rode was really the first one to ever do it in a, uh, in, in a commercial way, and they've got it in here as well. It's not terribly new anymore, but the fact that when it's plugged into your camera, when you turn your camera on, the mic automatically turns on. When you turn your camera off, the mic automatically turns off so it doesn't waste battery, and you never risk missing the audio. Fantastic. It has a 20 decibel pad, which means when you engage it, it will knock down the input gain by 20 decibels. That's, that's a lot. That's so that if you have a particularly loud sound source that's overdriving the mic, you can engage that pad and actually capture it, like a rock concert or the, the instruction manual. That's oh, too far away. The instruction manual shows a photo of a trumpet. <laughs> of a trumpet playing straight into it. So if you had a particularly loud sound source, you can engage that pad. And just for kicks, let's do a little test of the 20 dB pad. This is what it sounds like at the normal volume I'm recording it at. And this is what it sounds like with the minus 20 dB pad. It should sound much, much, much lower at this point. There's a presence boost, a presence boost, which is going to give you a little bit of extra clarity, a little bit of the uh, the highs. So if you have a particularly uh, warm or boomy or, or maybe kind of a muddy sound source and you want to give it a little bit of extra, extra punch, that's one way to do it. Now, normally, I would only ever do that in post-production, uh, but if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to do any post-production, if you are going live, right, so you can't do any post-production, live streaming, or if you just want to turn over really quickly, if you're doing projects for a client and you got to quickly get this stuff out and you want to have minimal to no post-processing, then having a presence boost is a great idea. And now we've got the presence boost on. This is what it sounds like with that boost in presence, that high frequency boost, giving me a little bit more clarity, probably breaking out some of the S's and the T's, right? S -s -s -t -t -t. So you should hear this sounding a little bit brighter than it did a moment ago. And again, for comparison, now the presence boost is off again, so you can hear the difference between when the presence boost was on and when the presence boost was off. It's got two low cuts, a 75 hertz and 150 hertz. 75 hertz, you should basically always have engaged when you're doing spoken word, whether it's male or female, because there's nothing under about 80 hertz in the human voice that's worth keeping. Everything under 80 hertz is gonna be background noise, car rumble, street noise, air conditioners, heaters, stuff like that. You don't need that. You only wanna leave off all of that stuff. You only wanna keep all of the low information if you're actually doing filmmaking for the purpose of capturing car noise or a heater or something with a low rumble, right? Like a, a music, right? A, a band which has got low bass and kick and stuff, kick drums and stuff like that. Here is the microphone with no filters engaged. This is absolutely straight out of the mic with nothing engaged at all. None of the functions, none of the buttons. This is what it sounds like. And this is what it sounds like with the 75 hertz low cut filter engaged you'll probably notice that there's not too big a difference in sound unless you're listening on phenomenal 
headphones because this room is virtually silent. It is acoustically treated. There's no fans on. There's no extra noise. There's no cars in the background. So you're really not going to hear too big a difference at 75 hertz. And then there's 150 hertz low cut, which is going to affect the tone of your voice, male and most female as well. It is going to make your voice a little bit less deep. You're going to lose some of the power in the low end, but you would use that if there's a lot of wind noise or a lot of like air conditioner or like low end rumble kind of stuff. That's going to help you get rid of that. You know that when there's a lot of wind? you're probably better off having the tone of the voice affected a little bit, but getting rid of that distracting low end. And now we have 150 hertz engaged. This, you should notice, it should be a significantly drop in, uh, in the bass tone, the lower register of my voice. It should sound a lot thinner because this would be designed to cut out fan noise, wind noise, air conditioning, that sort of thing. In a little bit, I'm going to do an actual test of a fan pointed directly at this mic, and we'll listen to the different low cuts again to get a feel for how they would react. Now to one of my favorite features, it's got a safety track built in. So if you want to engage the safety track, what does that mean? Well, it means it's gonna record two versions of the same sound source. It's gonna record however you've set it, and it's also gonna record at minus six dB at the same time. What does that do for you? Well, if you suddenly get way too loud or somebody's talking inconsistently or they move way too close to the mic or you didn't set your levels right, instead of ending up with a track that's just overblown, overdriven, distorted, you can use the entire safety track, which was recorded six decibels lower, which hopefully never distorted, never got overdriven, or you can just use the safety track to cut in for the couple of times you accidentally clipped. Here we have a test recording of the safety track function, in which case the left channel is recording the normal uh, input gain, and the right channel is recording minus 6 dB. Here we have a test recording of the safety track function, in which case the left channel is recording the normal uh, input gain, and the right channel is recording minus 6 dB. This is a feature that I love in my Tascam DR10L portable lav mic recorders. It's I, I just, I love it, especially if you're a solo operator like many of us are, and you're trying to get so many things done at the same time, and you just forget to check the input gain before you hit record with somebody or during a shot, and then you, you that's it, you get one chance and you miss it. And then your audio is clipped, it's distorted, it's the worst. So having a safety track built in is fantastic. And the way this one does it is it uses a stereo recording, a left and right, and it puts the normal track on the left and the minus 6 dB track on the right. All you have to do then is take that track into post, split the stereo into two separate monos, and then you have one mono track that you can manipulate, that was the standard one, and one mono track with the minus 6 dB, that you can manipulate by itself. Then you can cut those together, use just one, use just the other, whatever you need to. No need for batteries. This has a rechargeable battery via USB-C and Rode claims it has a 30 hour charge. I'm skeptical of the 30 hour charge. That is an excessively long amount of time. Having said that, I've been using this for two weeks without charging it. It's doing great so far. So the best I can say is, you know, if you're using it a lot, just every three or four days, plug that thing in overnight, it charges up very quick. I've already found that out. I did find that it charged up very, very quick. So um, now having a built-in battery that is not replaceable has an upside and a downside. We're gonna talk about the downside to that later. But speaking of the USB-C connection, if you plug in this mic to your computer via USB-C, it becomes an audio interface. In other words, you can use it just like a USB microphone, where you can select this mic as your audio input output device in your computer, and then you can plug headphones directly into the, uh, the, the, the eighth inch jack, like I am right now, and you can monitor your own audio. You can hear your own voice in real time with no delay, no latency. That's fantastic for live streams or using a webcam to record uh, you know, via OBS software or some similar type of software. So I love that you can use this thing directly as an audio interface. This is the Rode VideoMic NTG that is being used as a USB 
audio interface right now. So I'm getting uh, no latency audio monitoring directly out of it. And a couple of other features. The shock mount's fantastic, as you would expect. And it has this handy dandy uh, ability to move the mic forward and backward on the uh, on the shock mount itself. And the reason that's particularly useful, not for me, I don't really find much use for this, but if you are using a camera, if you, if you have it mounted on your camera, you've got a really wide lens, you might want to move it back so that there's no chance of this getting into the shot. And similarly, if you're using it on a camera and you need to get your, you're going to use the viewfinder, which as a video shooter, I never do, you would move it forward so that you can get your eye up without running into it. That's, that's very, very useful. And uh, la lastly, in terms of the actual um, feel, it feels good, it feels professional, it's lightweight, but it still feels sturdy. It's metal, I think. You seem like metal. I think it's metal. If it's not metal, it certainly feels good, and it uh, it looks nice. It's worth noting that you can mix and match all of these different features. So if you wanted to have the minus 20 pad on at the same time as the safety track recording feature, you could. If you want to have the presence boost and the minus 20 dB on at the same time, you can. If you want the presence boost and the 75 hertz and the uh, low cut and the minus 20 pad and the safety track on, you can do that. You can have all the different things on at the exact same time. So you can really personalize and customize this to do exactly what you need it to do. This mic is so versatile. At this point, I'm going to play a handful of clips from me actually using this mic for content creation, not as part of a review, not to talk about the mic itself, but I was just using it as designed. Uh, which was fascinating. Would you rather be attacked by a hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck. Our artistic tastes are not just deeply personal, but they're rooted in our childhood, our memories, our stories, our nostalgia, our experiences. Lindsay's not getting home until nine o'clock tonight, so I told her I would go food shopping, and one of the great benefits of being self-employed is that if I need to duck out and just do whatever for the household, I can. All of a sudden last night, I was trying to find the water shutoff valve for that portion, and I went into the basement and found, of course, it had been leaking through. Um, or you could sit down and order, like in the restaurant, I didn't want to do the Continental because it's always just a waste of money. Like, it's just a bunch of crap. Anybody who has followed my work for a long time, either on my previous channel, this channel, or has purchased and taken my Audio 101 for Content Creators online course, you all know how much I care about the the the, uh, the pickup pattern. Pickup pattern means where and how does the microphone pick up noise. I typically argue for a cardioid pickup pattern. I think most content creators would be well served with a cardioid pattern. Cardioid picks up from the front, and a little bit to the sides. It does a great job of rejecting everything that's directly behind it, and it's fantastic because it's directional, but it's not too directional. So you don't have to worry about the mic being exactly pointed directly at your mouth. Whereas this is a super cardioid, which means it only picks up directly in the front, basically nothing to the sides and nothing from the back. Well, what does that mean? It means it's very directional. It's going to be a great thing for rejecting extra noise and stuff in the background. But in order to get that kind of isolation, what you give up is any leeway in where you are. You might notice that I've been pretty static. I mean, I am just, I am keeping my body right here because my head's got to stay directly in front of this thing. If I talk to this side over here, or if I talk to that side over there, if I talk a little bit above it, if I talk a little bit below it, you'll notice that there's a very big difference in tone. All right, I've raved and raved about this thing, but do I have any concerns? I do. I do.
First concern, I've noticed that its maximum SPL is not great. SPL is sound pressure level. It means how loud of an input source, how loud of a sound source can this mic handle? And what I've found is it's it's not great. It's fine for normal talking, but if you try to say record a rock guitar coming out of a of a you know a, of a cabinet, in other words, if you're running a, a guitar through an amp through a a big cabinet and you're trying to record it, you know, like real recording volumes, this mic's not going to cut it. I did a test of sticking this thing pretty much right up on the grill of a cabinet, the way that you would record a guitar uh, in a studio, and even with the input gain set at zero, as low as it goes. Even with the minus 20 dB pad engaged, it was still distorting, which means the actual it was just too much sound pressure for the mic no matter what you did. <laughs> So that's a shame. I did find that if I moved it about three to four feet away from the cabinet, I was able to get good recording, uh, clean without distortion. But now you're recording the room, you're not really recording the guitar. So if you're like a musician YouTuber and you were hoping to use this for everything, for when you're doing talking head, for when you're tracking vocals, for when you're recording guitar, it may not be for you. I mentioned earlier that it's a non-replaceable battery. Why is that a potential concern? Well, first of all, we all know how rechargeable batteries go. After a couple of years of heavy use, they start to hold a much, much smaller charge. So I would bet if you use this thing a lot, in two years, it's gonna hold an hour or two of charge instead of 30 hours. I don't know that for sure. But if that's the case, the problem is you can't replace the battery. You would literally have to just buy a new unit, replace the whole unit, which one, is a waste of money. And two, if you're concerned about the environment, that's just gonna add to landfills. So that is a legitimate concern. And I know I'm like the millionth reviewer on YouTube who's mentioned that about uh, this mic and mics like this recently. And finally, not so much a concern, but just this is overkill for most vloggers. If you're just a YouTube vlogger and you just like to make videos for fun and run around with your friends and do travel videos, you don't need this for 250 bucks. Grab the Rode Video Micro for 60 bucks or the Movo VXR10 for 50. This one's a bit brighter, better right out of the gate. The Movo VXR10 is a bit warmer and fuller, but you have to do a little bit of post-production or it's too muddy. Grab a 40 or $50 microphone, stick it on your camera, and just don't think about it again. You don't need something that's 250 bucks with this many features if all you're doing is having fun. Having said that, into the conclusion of this video, if you are a serious content creator, doesn't mean you have to make any money, right? But if you if you are a serious content creator, maybe you make money directly from AdSense, maybe you don't make any money at all and you're just using it uh, to support your business or promote your business, and or maybe you're someone like me who kind of is floating in between. I use my content creation to support my business as an author, speaker, and consultant, right? But I also make some money from AdSense and from the affiliate links in the description. So for someone like me, this is the best all-around mic 250 bucks could possibly spend. The features are packed. It's so versatile. It'll plug into anything I want to plug it into. I can live stream with it. I can vlog with it in the real world out there running and gunning on my camera. I can do talking head stuff here in the studio. I can boom it overhead for professional videos for my clients. I mean, it just you can do anything with this mic, and it sounds fantastic. So I can't recommend this mic enough. Yes, Rode sent it to me for free in exchange for a review. And as unbiased as I can possibly be within the context of the fact that we all know you can't truly be unbiased when you're given something for free, I cannot recommend this mic enough. So I hope this review was helpful. If you want to uh, know anything more, if you want to see me run a bunch of tests on this or blind tests, uh, if you want to see me compare it for some reason to the $60 Rode Video Micro, it wouldn't be a fair comparison, but some of you might be curious how it sounds in comparison to this. Let me know in the comments if I get enough comments on a particular type of video. I will do my best to get that to you. Anyway, that said, my name is Brian Miller. Thanks so much for sticking with me, and always remember that our world is a shared experience. 
So get out there, make a dent in the universe, sound better, level up, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.